So today we're going to go through our winter problems analysis from January 2012. So question one, we kick off with some alpha amino acids, start with aniline. Gives me that isoelectric point. Now, what's meant by isoelectric point? Um, the isoelectric point, of course, is the pH at which the zitter ion exists. Draw the structure of the ions formed by aniline at pH 6. Notice pH 6 is at its isoelectric point. So if you draw the uh, general structure, you've got a CH3 group there. At its isoelectric point, the proton has transferred from the acid onto the amine group, like so. Um, at pH 1.5, it's then in acidic conditions. So I will have protonated the carboxylic acid as well. So those are my two structures. Um, different R groups give different isolated points. Um, how can it be lower than pH 3 and higher than pH 10? So if I want it to be lower, it means I've got to make it more acidic. So that would be adding a carboxylic acid group. And conversely, if I want it to be more basic, I would be when I've been adding an amine group. Right, we then get to uh, do a section of polysterine. Serine is where R is equal to CH2OH. So if we start off CH2OH, H, C double bond O, now that is where it's going to connect to a nitrogen of another serine. Uh, there we go like so, and then that is going to go um, the other way, so the next atom would be a nitrogen. Uh, it's a polymer, and therefore I leave the bond at the end. Uh, right, okay, um, apart from glycine, all our amino acids are show optoglycine. Why does it not, show, why does glycine not show optoglycine? It's because it's got no chiral center, you, need, you know you need a carbon which has got four different uh, groups around it. Uh, for glycine, you actually have um, two H's, like so, and therefore he is not optically active. 3D diagrams for stink where that's CH2SH. So, uh, you know, just make sure you do draw this in 3D. Uh, you can put your CH2SH there, perhaps. One's going to be an H, one's going to be a carboxylic acid, and one's going to be your NH2. And then you need to do your mirror image, like so. Uh, oops, so that's going to go that way. Like so, and that would then would be your NH2H going back there, and your copy synthesis so would there. If you think that's your mirror, hopefully you can see that that's your mirror image there. Uh, okay, so um, alpha amino acids used in uh, many pharmaceuticals. Um, two disadvantages of synthesizing a peptide based on a mixture of optical isomers and two methods that we can uh, make sure it doesn't happen. Two disadvantages, uh, side effects. Obviously, one of your optical isomers could give you quite serious side effects and it will obviously reduce the pharmacological activity because one optical isomer will be active and the other won't be active, so you're going to take double the dose. Uh, because half the drug won't do any, any good for you. Um, two ways you can do it is you can start off with a naturally occurring chiral molecule, uh, so it's already got the correct chirality, and you just got to be, make, make, be careful you don't mess it up when you start playing around with it in the lab. Um, and the other way is to use enzymes, which produce naturally, uh, only produce one form of the optical isomer. Oh, wait, so it's now time for a bit of NMR. I've got a predict number of peaks. So let's go through this boy here. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all different. One, two, three, four. But these two are going to be the same, aren't they? One, two, three, four, five peaks. And for this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like so. 
those two will be the same, and those two will be the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, right, so this is an interesting one. This is where they give you something you haven't seen before and they expect you to be able to, to work with it. Um, so, if you think about what glycine looked like, um, hopefully you can see that from one glycine, that would have been the NH2, and that would have been the C. OOH, and that is your central carbon, which contains the two H's, like so. So we've got to draw it now uh, with two different amino acids. So the first thing, for this one it's not too bad, you can draw out the same structure that you have here. like so, but now, rather than two H's coming off that carbon, you're going to have this group coming off the carbon there, and coming off the carbon there. For the next one, it's slightly more difficult, but you can draw your basic structure again. If we just draw the basic ring of glycine, like so. Now if we go back to this, you notice he's got an only one H on him, so that H, both those H's are going to go, and actually he forms a bonic membrane ring coming off from that carbon, so. Like so. You have that structure there, um, where that ring is just there. So, Draw your basic ring and then just add in your R groups coming off. Obviously, proline is a difficult one there. Oh, uh, right, okay, so this is a simple group. I've got to get from benzene all the way down to four chlorophenylamine there. So you can do it in different ways. The first way I would probably do it is start off with um, chlorine and an iron trichloride catalyst, like so. Um, and then that would give me chlorobenzene. You've got to get to an NH2 group. Now, there's no way of directly introducing an NH2 group. You've got to go for a nitro group. So the next one would be to add nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid as well. Um, and you also need to heat that. And that would introduce a nitro group, like so. The next thing you need to reduce that nitro group using tin in concentrated hydrochloric acid as well. It does okay, so the chemicals. Um, and then that would produce full chlorophenolamine. Right, so full chlorophenolamine can convert into diazonium ion. Draw the structure of the diazonium ion. So, my NH2 group becomes the diazonium um, function group, the plus charge being on that nitrogen there. Um, and then if I react that to phenol, it joins up. Phenol, like so. So I've just added phenol onto that nitrogen there. Okay, the next step, they want me to do this mechanism. Now, if you have a look, that's SO3 there, which is there, but that bond has gone into a single bond. So, the first step is always the electrons come up to attack a delta positive uh, species or atom, and then that bond is going to break there. So, my intermediate is going to be that void there with a plus charge, and then 
that bond's going to break to give me H plus there. They've now given me the structure of paracetamol, and they want me to react paracetamol with bromine. You hopefully notice it's got a phenol group here. Nothing here will react with bromine, so um, I'll have put bromine there. Um, various ways, as long as you put bromine on the ring, uh, you're okay. Um, then reaction with sodium. Again, nothing here is going to react with sodium. But the phenol group will to produce that sodium phenoxide functional group there. Okie dokie. So um, I'm now going to hydrolyze um, paracetamol with sodium hydroxide solution. So that's going to break the amide group, the amide bond there. So, I will end up with this being the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid because I'm in uh, alkaline conditions. And also, it will give me the phenoxide group there.